Welcome to A Cup of English, where you can listen to a smooth English podcast and read the words. All for you wonderful students. The title of the next podcast is... The Colours of Autumn Come with me for a walk in my October garden. This day has a touch of magic, so I must be in it. I don't want to miss it. For a few minutes, we can put the busyness aside and step out into a world of calm and colour. While we have been so occupied with the things of life, the worries, the obligations, the plans, the world of plants and creatures has been turning. It turns with the seasons. It submits in the winter, shuts down, stands still. All is white, quiet, buried. Then the spring, with its warmth, its hope, its energy, bursting everywhere. Youth rushes in on the wind and paints the land. Summer comes, and with her beaming smile gets our attention. She touches our skin, even through a window, and all is green and colour. But there is a fourth sister, the season born between summer and winter. She is autumn, mild and mysterious. It is her time now. She has been here. I can see her footprints. She left a trail of frost this morning and hung a chill in the air. But then she will breathe warmth that moves through the trees, the brightest sun that brings out the colours. She loves the moon and changes just like it. Her whisper is, Get ready, get ready for change. And as she passes over the land, the trees obey her and blaze in reds, orange, pink and gold. The birds and insects follow her skirt of colours as it moves in the daylight. The bats follow her in the moonlight. The busy squirrels and tiny mice see her in the garden and know that it is time to prepare for the winter. They gather seeds and nuts and make warm beds for the cold months. They dart up and down, in and out of the old vegetable plot, where the vines have faded and the pumpkins have been picked. Quickly now, they think, as they scurry to their secret places with the seeds of flowers long gone. The birds watch from up high. They see the movement, the colours, the swirling and the changing. Autumn glances up at them, a shimmer in her eyes. They too know that soon when the colours have all turned to brown and the trees are bare, that they must say goodbye 
and fly away with their friends. Or be brave and, like the squirrel, make a warm, safe place for winter. But that time hasn't come just yet. We have the gift of walking in this golden space, this fiery light of oranges and yellows, on the ground, in the air, falling here, there. The painted leaves nod at us gently, then shudder as the wind whips up and around, and off they go from their mother tree, through the air, tumbling like a wave, scattered where we walk. I want it to always be this way, to witness this beauty that shifts its shape around me. Autumn, stay. Tell the moon to hold back your sister, to slow her steps towards us. We need to walk with you longer, to bathe in your colours, and to slowly breathe your breath of change. Okay, so the notes for the grammar points today, just three of them. The first one is the word busyness. Well, this is different from the word business. It's spelt in a similar way. This is B-U-S-Y-N-E-S-S. And really, it is the state of being busy when you are a busy bee. A. Yoga helps me escape from the stress and busyness of work. Yoga helps me escape from the stress and busyness of work. B. The busyness of modern life can be exhausting. The busyness of modern life can be exhausting. Number two. Scurry. It's a verb to scurry. And really, it describes how a little animal, a rodent, like a mouse, or a squirrel, usually an animal that has four feet and nails on their toes, how they run very quickly, their legs move very fast, and they make a slight scratching noise with their nails. That is the verb to scurry. A. I could hear the mice scurrying on our wooden floor. I could hear the mice scurrying on our wooden floor. B. The little lizard scurried up the wall to safety. The little lizard scurried up the wall to safety. Number three, to glance. Well, a glance is a quick look at something. A. When you're driving, you only have to glance up at the rear view mirror for a second. When you're driving, you only have to glance up at the rear view mirror for a second. B. I glanced at him, but he wasn't looking at me. I glanced at him, but he wasn't looking at me. Thank you for joining me. Please like and subscribe and check out a cupofenglish.com.